we have seen a spike in the number of random arguments that occur when people are out living in their daily lives. In the name of politics, religion, love, parenting, animal cruelty, you name it, we argue about it. But why? And is there a better way? Hi, my name is Judy Garrett, and today I will be telling you about how arguing is the connection we need to push forward society. We have just been doing it all wrong. Arguing has always been seen as the enemy of good conversation. It's the black sheep of debate. It's the last resort before we stop listening and start attacking. But that's not what it should be. Arguing is actually beneficial, according to Dr. For Jennifer A. Samp, PhD of Psychology Today. She says, arguing facilitates talk and awareness of another's perspective. Therefore, it is important to keep in mind that conflict and arguing can be very beneficial to the health of friendships and romantic relationships. What? This can't be. Mind blown. Okay, let's break this down because I feel an argument coming up. An argument, as defined by Oxford Dictionary, is to give reasons or cite evidence in support of idea, action, or theory, typically with the aim of persuading others to share one's view. And and express or diverging or opposite views, typically in a heated or angry manner. So every single time you try to prove your point to someone who disagrees with you, you're arguing. But there are two key points that we typically remember when it comes to an argument. One, that the goal is to persuade others to share our perspective. And two, that it is typically done in a heated or angry way. Now here's where we can learn to do better. We need to manage our emotions, improve our point with facts. And remember, not every argument is for you to win. Sometimes you just have to give it up because, because the goal is to listen, learn, and share because I want us to learn from one another. In order to be good at arguing, you have to practice. And who better to practice on than your family and your spouse? But Jonah, is it arguing with your friends and spouse a bad thing? I hear you think, well, no, it's actually good. Dr. Nandy, PhD from AskNandy.com says, it makes you more optimistic. It helps you to not resent or refuse to talk to the other person as arguing lets out the emotions stored inside of you. Huh, wonder why that doesn't work too well with my mom. <laughs> but what if I'm trying to meet someone? You could have an argument. University of Arizona's Elizabeth Willett also wrote a paper on arguing. She writes, you can learn a lot about people from the way they argue. First, you learn what they believe about the issue at hand and why they believe it. Second, from the way they argue, you learn about their values, their beliefs, and, in, and the ways in which they present them. You not only end up with insight into your partner's arguing positions, but your partner's entire world viewpoint as well. Basically, the greatest relationship building, team building exercise out there. There's almost nothing arguing can't solve if done correctly. But I don't know the correct way to argue, so none of this matters, I hear you think. Well, there really is no correct way to argue. But here are five things that you should remember every single time you argue. Respond instead of reacting. Use your words, not your actions, and control your emotions, not the other way around. Know what you're talking about before getting into an argument and get to the root of the problem. Three, don't fight dirty. Four, don't play to be right because ending an argument that will turn into a fight is better than worrying about your pride. And five, an argument is not about the destination. It's about the journey. You, you find out what that means for yourself. Arguing is not about yelling at each other. It's about conversing ideas, and that is what will make us more connected. Hearing other people, because we like to think about ourselves and not others. And those can be the ideas that change the world. So next time you argue, do it right. Because as the ancient poet Rumi said, raise your words, not your voice. It is rain that grows flowers, not thunder. And your voice can be the rain a flower needs. Thank you.